get the word and go out bearing the word in our daily lives. This Memorial Day weekend, I hope you participate in some uh, remembrance. I'll be down north of Decorah on Monday. I get to go to two meals, one a breakfast and one a dinner, dinner and it's a hard life, but uh, I'm willing to suffer. Next Saturday, a week from today, is a work day at the, la uh, the our church land at 8 a.m., and if you can't make it at 8, I suspect no one will speak badly of you if you show up at 9. Um, we will be celebrating, what was that? <laughs> I see, I, I'm getting some criticism over here. <laughs> show up at 8. Uh, and then join us then in the evening for the celebration of the Pentecost, the eve of the Pentecost. Do you have any particular announcements that need to be brought before us? Hallelujah, Christ is risen, hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to remain seated for the confession and forgiveness because I'd like you to spend time doing some thinking as we gather, speak, and pray. We gather as we live in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in his mercy has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able. Our hymn is the church's one foundation.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast, victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain and gone his reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray. O King of glory and Lord of countless angels, in triumph you ascended to the highest heaven. Abandon us not to be orphans, but keep your Father's promise to send your spirit of truth. You live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the hearing of the word. The first lesson is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, beginning with verse 12. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away, and when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers, the company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, Echolidama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias, and they played and prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The psalm is Psalm 133, verses 1 through 3, and it was in the um, lit litany as a responsive by line. So I'll read the first line, and then you do the second. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 22, beginning with verse 1. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. 
They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the evildoers still do evil, and the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let the one who hears say, come, and let the one who is thirsty come, let the one who desires take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Oh, yeah. oh, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Our Lord Jesus says, I do not ask for these only, referring to his disciples, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved me, even as you lo loved them, even as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I have made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated.
and we are going to sing the first two verses of our hymn. couple of weeks of graduation ceremonies for many, a day when we forget or remember that commencement has to do with the beginning and with growth. Memorial Day weekend, a time when we remember those who have served under arms, those who have died for our benefit that we might live free. And this seventh Sunday of Easter, growth, death, Easter. And our gospel is a portion of Jesus' prayer. Ask the Father that Jesus' followers be one. And we look at that oneness. But to see that oneness, hear the beginning of the book of Acts. The verses just before our reading, Acts 1 through 11. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven 
will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Some of us weren't at an Ascension Day service this last Thursday. Raise your hand if you weren't there. (laughs) We light that Paschal candle during Eastertide up through the Ascension and then at baptisms and funerals. And as we join the disciples looking up and having angelic folks say, what are you doing? Jesus Christ calls us to ask what it means to be one. Clearly there are some things that Jesus does not mean by it. We don't have to look the same. Thank God, I would not want to look at everybody looking like me. We do not have to feel the same. We do not have to act the same. No. Yes and no in some ways. That sameness, that oneness has to do with intent and action and identity, has to do with ourselves and God. And we don't start it, and we can't finish it. We cannot on our own, as Luther writes in the third article explanation. The Heavenly Father starts it. And God's power is the only power able to do the job. It has to do with what we want and what we do, living out of God's power. Please pray with me. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit instructs the hearts of the faithful, grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in the Spirit's consolations through Christ. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. And all God's people say, Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. I have a hard time with this Sunday each year. It's kind of an in-between Sunday. The light is out on the Paschal candle. We are not at the Pentecost yet. And we hear Jesus speaking to his disciples then and now. Yet again, our gospel reading is from John's gospel, from Jesus' farewell speech at that last supper with his disciples gathered around him. Jesus closed his farewell speech with a prayer that starts with chapter 17, verse 1. And in verses 1 through 8, Jesus prays for the manifesting, the showing, the showing of his glory. Remember for John, Jesus' glory shines from the cross. That is his throne, Lord enthroned in awesome splendor. In verses 9 through 19, Jesus turns to his disciples and prays for them in their struggles awaiting them. And then in our gospel reading for this evening, In the last section of the prayer, verses 20 through 26, our text for today, Jesus' prayer breaks out. It breaks out going beyond the table and the upper room. It reaches out to encompass all who come to believe through the disciples. And here Jesus is praying for you, for me. Salvador Dali has a remarkable painting of the Last Supper, capturing for me quite a bit of what I think and feel as I read this portion of Jesus' prayer. The painting is of an upper room with Jesus at the head of the table, a traditional scene of the disciples and Jesus, but then it 
becomes obvious that the walls behind the table are transparent. And the table is not limited to that one room. It's not limited by space-time, not confined to any room, but is in the center of expanding horizons, extending out into the world. And here I'll use the word that the Greek is used by John, cosmos, not just this little blue marble on which we live. So the event of the table is not limited, nor are the words about the table limited. Jesus is praying to the Father for us. He who is one with the Father from the beginning. And we Western Christians so often move from Jesus to the Trinity. I think we need to think somewhat like Eastern Christians at times who move from the Trinity to Jesus. Jesus is praying to the Father for us, one with the Father from the beginning, who was and is involved in the creation of all things, who did and does live in unity with the Father. He prays that you and I may be in unity with him, with one another, and with the Father united with each other, with God the Son and God the Father. Unity is not something we can force. We are called to exert ourselves, but I can't make it happen. Unity lies in God's power alone and not in human striving. As our relationship with God grows, and by the way, you have two choices about your relationship with God. You can let it grow or you can let it wither. As it grows, as we join together evenings like this, as we read Scripture and let Scripture read us in a sense, as we pray Scripture and as we pray about and for one another, As we do this, we grow in our unity. As our relationship with God deepens and strengthens, so does our life together. My rule of thumb is where there's a problem with fellowship. It's a problem with the relationship with God, foremost and fundamentally. The greater divisions and distance we have with one another, the greater distance and divisions we have and we realize from God. In his prayer, Jesus expresses his belief, his strong hunger in what the Father would do in the future. He also expresses his confidence in his disciples. He trusts them to bear the good news into the world. He believes that they will carry his message so that the world will know that Jesus and the Father are one. Sometimes I think we've done a grave disservice by continuing to use the Greek word apostle. It's rooted in apostolain, to send out. That's what they were called in Greek. But maybe sent out ones or missionaries? People with a mission, with a purpose. I'm reminded of a story about someone asking Jesus, and purely non-factual, asking Jesus when he planned to tell the world that he is the Son of God and that he died and rose, that all might have salvation in him. Jesus said, I've told Peter and Paul and others. But what if they fail to get the word out? What is your alternative plan? And at least according to this story, Jesus says, I have no alternative plan. It is a miracle that the disciples gathered there at that Last Supper, as we gather here this late afternoon, early evening, around that same supper. 
It is a miracle that the disciples and the apostles, the followers and the sent out ones spread the word around the Mediterranean area as they did. And what of us today? It is a miracle that they risked their lives to do it. Of course, in some ways, fueled by the Holy Spirit, I'm not sure they had much control over what and how they did. It was a miracle of God. And the gospel spread. Normal working blokes, as the Brits would say, common working folk who told the story of Jesus our Christ over and over and over and over again, Wherever they went, whether being caused to be put in prison or run out of town, beaten with rods, as we read in Acts, regardless. And the words of Jesus were written down and handed down to us. Jesus didn't have a plan B. No other plan than to trust his disciples to tell the story. And he didn't need plan B, an alternative. His prayer expresses his confidence in his Father and in his disciples. I'm caught by our reading seven very simple verses, simple in the English, simple in the Greek, and connected in ways that still amaze and attract me. Glory is at the center. Glory which is given, we read in verses 22 and 24, both glory and given. And love, that agape, that pure love, the love which was in Christ as he died for us. It was there before the foundation of the world, the cosmos, and the righteous Father loved the Son and desired, desired that all be one. And that one being in, being with, believing, and in order that. A dramatic and relentless purposiveness in order that. We read about that in order that they may also be one, that they may also be one, so that the world may believe that you have sent me, in order that they may be one, in order that may be, they may become perfectly one, in order that the world may know that you sent me and love them as you loved me. Purpose. Sent. Sent out to do a job. But we, are we sent? What is our purpose? Well, we gather here Saturday evenings. Well, we'll gather Saturday morning next to do work on the land. Go and make disciples by baptizing them in the name of the Trinity and teaching them to obey all I commanded you. Called to call. Sent to bring back. The unity Jesus prays for is the work and activity of the Holy Spirit. When that spirit gathers us as it does tonight around the Lord's table at our Eucharist, we are drawn into a unity of Christ and of purpose, drawn into a unity with one another and with God. And as we drink Christ's blood and eat Christ's body, we are no longer our own. We cross the threshold of time and space and we join with the entire church of all time and of all space. We join together, recognizing who this Jesus is, and gathered by the Spirit, 
we go out to do the Spirit's will. The sacrament transcends the limits of time and space. And by doing that, we in our earthly body and Christ in his resurrected body, seated at the right hand of the Father, we and Christ come together in unity, which is more than passive and torpor. Maybe it is the best image of one big united body eating and chewing and drinking. Or maybe as Dolly painted, a table suspended in the heavens with Christ as the head. And then the Holy Spirit sends us out. Sends us out to do the will of Christ that all may know him that no one be left behind, that all believe to life everlasting, and all God's people say, Amen. Please rise, we sing those final two verses of our hymn of the day. We confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed, page 4 on the insert. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, but all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our prayers. We pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all according to their various needs. 
Holy Father, you tell us to ask for what we need in Jesus' name, and you will answer. Let us be prayer warriors for the sake of the church and the world, that we devote ourselves to a regular time of prayer and devotion. Help us to hear your wisdom in our lives and faithfully to follow our Lord Jesus Christ in all we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. God of all creation, gather your people together from the four corners of the earth to be one in Christ, just as you and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one. Help us set aside things that create divisions in the body of Christ, Things such as jealousy, anxiety, privilege, false teaching. Pour out your healing spirit on your holy bride, the church, that all who believe live together in faith and mutual care. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Loving Lord, you are healer of all our ills. Bring us to the newness of life you've promised us through Jesus Christ. Put an end to disease, chaos, and catastrophes plaguing human life. We lift up before you those who were touched by the shooting in in Texas and other shootings throughout our United States. We ask for wisdom in the way we handle these things. Guide legislators and law enforcement people. We lift up before you Julie and the rest of Pastor Dave's family. We ask for your comfort for the Sir family. We give you thanks for Pastor Fox's life and death and ask your comfort for his family. And Heavenly Father, we pause in silence, naming others before you. Make us one as we walk through pain and joy, as we live in hope in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Most Holy One, guide and protect our military service personnel as they serve our nation and keep us free from tyranny. Keep them safe from harm and bring them home safely when their mission has been completed. Watch over families while their loved ones are away from home. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, all for whom we should have prayed, trusting not in ourselves, but in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I remind you that there is a basket over there for your offering, and I do remind you that you'll be wanting to be sure you have the elements for Holy Communion with you, and if you don't, this would be a good time to get them. Shall we sing the proper uh, preface there, the Lord be with you in that? Or shall we just say it? Tell you what, let me make a decision. We'll say it. That's okay. I'm glad I I already decided. (laughs) The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection appeared openly to his disciples and in their sight was taken up into heaven that he might make us partakers of his divine nature. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, We praise your name and we join their unending hymn and we sing Holy, Holy. Holy, Holy Lord, God of power. 
that bite. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Oh, Hosanna, oh, Hosanna, oh, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We gather to remember. To remember who we are, whose we are. We gather to remember that our Lord Jesus Christ in the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, all of you drink of it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And remem we remember that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we and all who share in this bread and cup be united in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may enter the fullness of the kingdom of heaven, may receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place, and unite, unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. We remember and we pray as Christ leads us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please open up the bread end of your elements. This is the body of Christ given for you, and go ahead and eat that small wafer. And please open up the liquid end of the elements, the blood of Christ shed for you, and go ahead and drink. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Please rise for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is God be with you till we meet again.
meet at Jesus' feet till we meet. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in the peace of the risen Lord. Serve that Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.